Hey, Pin Dude here. Welcome back to My Vintage Pinball. Today's episode is Pinball Restoration Update Part Number One on Gottlieb Countdown, 1979 pinball machine that we just picked up last week. Uh, we're going to get going on doing a quickie restore on this game. Should go really quick. Uh, we're just going to strip the cabinet down, go through it real quick, fix all the da uh, any wood damage on the cabinet. We're not going to do any repainting or anything like that. Polish up the cabinet, make it look pretty, put it all back together, do the same thing to the head, uh, and put the cabinet together and in the game room. The play field was already kind of went through by the previous owner. We're just going to go through uh, the play field real quick and do some stuff. Uh, this full restore should only take, I'm hoping, two weeks. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to hit that. Um, so in this episode, part number one, we're going to be doing all the cabinet work. We're going to strip the cabinet. Uh, we're going to fix any loose plies or any damage along the bottom of the cabinet. Uh, we're going to clean and buff the cabinet, polish the side rails, uh, maybe get to the coin door. Uh, clean that up and uh, just generally go through the whole cabinet hopefully we'll get the whole cabinet done in part number one here and then do the head in part number two maybe this will only be a three maybe four part series on 1979 countdown uh, but that's what we're gonna do so let's get started on this Gottlieb countdown system one pinball machine all right, so let's get started working on the Gottlieb countdown that we just got. Uh, so last night I went around and I uh, used wood glue and fixed all the outer plies that were uh, loose. So I just uh, put some, I peeled back the section that was loose, uh, brushed some uh, globs of wood glue in there, squeezed it down, and then I, I just used some of my clamps here, which I'm going to take off now because it's been sitting all night and glued all these plies all the way around the cabinet. Anything that was loose, I glued. So now we're gonna make this quickie restore more involved than it needs to be. I'm pretty much gonna gut the inside of the cabinet. The reason being is I need to flip the cabinet over. Uh, there's a bunch of damage as typical uh, on the underneath. So, uh, and I wanna clean up a bunch of the stuff on the inside. So uh, for starters, I'm going to take the glass off, bring that inside, and then I'm going to take a bunch of pictures of the inside of the cabinet before uh, I tear anything apart. So I make sure I know where everything goes. All right, so I'm starting to tear things down. I'm working from the front to the back. Uh, there's not a whole heck of a lot to take out. I really like how these Gottliebs, the, uh, the bottom panel's like an EM. It's just like two big bolts and the whole bottom panel is going to come out. I'll show you that when we get there. Right now I'm working on uh, getting the uh, coin door off. The wiring kind of runs through the, uh, the tilt panel. So I took the tilt panel off. We'll clean all that stuff off. And uh, I think I'm ready to unbolt the coin door now. So I'm just gonna start taking the bolts out and uh, we'll put the coin door inside for now and worry about that later after we get the cabinet work done. All right, so we got the coin door off. You can see all the gunk. Somebody must have spilled something. There's a bunch of gunk on the cabinet, so it's a good thing we took this off. So like I said, I'll bring this inside and we'll uh, continue to strip down the rest of the cabinet. All right, so I got pretty much everything else unbolted from the inside of the cabinet. I'm gonna take the bottom panel out now and all the wiring. And uh, like I said, this is like an old EM setup. It's just two screws here. Two big screws. All right, so I'm gonna pull this out and set it to the side, and then we can start working on the uh, flipping the cabinet over and taking a look at the bottom side and see what we got to do. All right, got the cabinet carefully turned over upside down. 
I pulled the security plate off. It's in uh, particularly bad shape for some reason. It's all bent up. It's going to take some uh, reworking to get this at least flatter and nice and shined up, and we'll put it back on. It was just held on with a couple tacks, and then there was a couple screws that go through to the block that holds the power switch in. So we'll work on this at a later date. But the main thing, and really the only major thing that I need to fix on the cabinet is this lower lip here. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right, so you pretty much get this on all machines. I don't think I've ever gotten a machine that didn't need some kind of work down here. So we have all this broken wood down here. So we need to uh, sister a piece of wood in here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, cleanly kind of square off a break here. And then I'm gonna take some strips of poplar. I get these in the uh, like Home Depot or Lowe's where they have the project panels. And uh, we're gonna glue in a piece of this and then trim it, sand it down, and then we'll sand all of the edges and glue any spots that need to be glued. And uh, that's that. So let me work on this and I'll come back and I'll show you my progress. All right, so I just used a sharp utility knife and I trimmed away all that broken piece and I squared off a corner here. And now if I line up my poplar, it's, it's perfectly in line with the pieces that are left. So I just need to trim this piece down so it's gonna fit. And then we're gonna glue, after we uh, clean up all the loose pieces, sand this down a little bit so the glue has a nice uh, you know, surface to key into. And then we're gonna glue this piece in and then we'll probably trim it to height in the end. Uh, yeah. So let's uh, start working on cleaning this up and uh, making this fit. And then we'll be good to go. All right, so I have a piece trimmed to fit and I just ripped it real quick. It used to be this thick. I just did a rough rip. I don't have a table saw or anything. Did it with a hand uh, cordless saw. Uh, so it's sitting higher than it needs to be. Uh, after it's glued, I'll take a planer and I'll plane it down and it'll blend in nice with the surrounding area. So now I'm gonna put a bunch of wood glue on the surfaces and glue this in and clamp it. I also have a section of the outer ply here that's loose. I need to get some glue down there and while I'm clamping this, I'll also clamp that and uh, get this all glued together and let that dry. All right, so I got this piece all glued in. I got it clamped up. I clamped that, I glued that loose piece of ply on the, uh, under the coin door here. That's clamped. I also went around and fixed a bunch of other little areas on the cabinet, including the back. There was a bunch of uh, splits in the wood back here. I didn't want to break it off and put a new piece in because it was still fairly intact. I just opened up the crack a little bit with a screwdriver and used a toothpick to get some glue down there and I clamped it. And then there was a couple of voids uh, where like a ply, just a small piece of ply came out. I just trimmed down a popsicle stick and shoved it down into the hole and glued it in. Uh, once all, everything dries, we'll sand all the bottom edge here and all the repairs will blend in and you really won't notice them and the bottom will be nice and solid. All right, while I'm uh, waiting on the glue to dry, I'm uh, ultrasonic in all the hardware that came out of the cabinet so I can get it ready to go through the tumbler. Uh, since we have all the hardware out, we might as well run it through the ultrasonic and the tumbler to shine everything up so when we put the cabinet back together, everything will look uh, nice and clean and shiny. Uh, so I'll get on all that. I got the uh, all the plastic parts like the flipper buttons uh, and stuff like that soaking in mean green and this will also go through the ultrasonic. I'm hoping to, uh, well not hoping, I'm going to be reusing all these parts. I don't plan on ordering much of anything for this game other than like some of the leg hardware I need and a couple other minor things. But you know, we're not doing a full restore on this. 
we just want to clean and shine everything up. All right, so the glue is all dried on my little repairs here. And I just have a little Stanley plane that I use to uh, kind of rough trim this level with the uh, surrounding surface. So I'm just going to work on planing this down. And then once we get it a lot closer, we'll hit it with sandpaper and blend all of these repairs in. All right, so we got that pretty close, so I, I'm gonna go with 150 grit on a sanding block and finish up sanding this even with the surrounding surface. All right, I just came back from uh, out in the driveway where I was sanding all this stuff. So uh, you can see my, my main repair is right here and it blends in really nice. Uh, I sanded this with a hand sanding block with 150 and then 220. And then I used uh, my palm sander with a 320 to uh, smooth it up real good. And I chamfered the edges a little bit. So hopefully uh, it won't get caught on anything when you move the game and it won't chunk out ever again. Uh, so that came out real good. And the, uh, the bottom of these system one games, I don't know what, I don't know if this is masonite or pressed cardboard. It's got a texture to it. Uh, it was heavily stained. So I sanded it with a 220 on my random orbit sander. And then I used 220 on my palm sander to get into the corners. Uh, and it's, you know, it's not perfect, but most of the staining is gone. It's got a much nicer wood tone color to it now, as opposed to the darker kind of grayish black that it looked like before. Uh, I still got to clean it up a little bit. Uh, so we did all that sanding and it came up pretty good. So I'm just going to clean the bottom of this real quick and then I'll get it back on the cart and I'll show you the inside of the cabinet because I also sanded the uh, bottom of the inside. All right, so I also used my palm sander on the inside. Again, this is like a cardboardy almost material, real cheap. Uh, but I was able to get a lot of the stain in that. It's not perfect. Uh, most of it's under the where the coin box will be, so not that big of a deal. Uh, but it looks a lot better. I cleaned up the edges of this board because they were real rough, so I kind of chamfered the edges. Just generally uh, cleaned up on the inside. Uh, gave it a light sand everywhere, so uh, there's nothing to like, you know, rough texture to get caught on when you when you clean it uh, so it looks pretty good I also did the uh, preliminary uh, work on the side rails here and what I use is just a red scotch bright pad with a little WD-40 and you kind of run it all in one direction and it does a pretty good job of cleaning it up we still got a lot of work uh, to do on those I just wanted to do the preliminary cleanup on those since we were at the messy stage here and uh, I started to work on the front a little bit as far as cleaning up the artwork. And uh, you can see the, the orange and the white on this side is coming up pretty good. Still a little discolored on this side. It really didn't do much here. Uh, and I'll show you how I'm going to end up getting this cabinet cleaned up in the next step. Uh, but for tonight, that's all I'm going to get done. I'm working, uh, you know, after work. I think I've been out here about two and a half hours after work on a uh, Friday night it is right now. And I got a lot done, at least I, I got all the messy stuff done, you know, all the sanding in the driveway. I wanted to get that done because it's messy, um, completely covered in sawdust. Uh, so now that all that's done, now I can get to the actual, you know, cleaning up of the artwork and trying to get the colors to pop, get this cabinet all buffed up. And then, uh, so that'll be hopefully tomorrow night. And then that'll be the last step uh, after that, it'll pretty much be reassembly of the cabinet. Uh, tumblers have been running with all the hardware and stuff I took out. So uh, I think by uh, middle of next week, we should have this cabinet back together. So let me clean up for the night and uh, we'll get back to this tomorrow. All right, so I'm working on uh, cleaning up the cabinet. And I've already done the front and this side. And you can see the whites look real good. The whites look nice and uh, bright now. The orange is real bright. The blue is nice and vibrant. Uh, so we got all the scuff marks off, all the discoloring on the white dots. The front 
had a bunch of marks and stuff on it. Looks real good. It feels real good. Now, how I did this is you don't want to use like a lot of liquid on the cabinet. You know, you don't you don't want to use a lot of mean green or simple green or whatever you use to clean uh, stuff with, because that liquid will get in all the planking on the cabinet. It'll get behind and inside those cracks, and it'll cause the wood to swell, and that swelling will cause the paint to crack and it can cause the paint to flake off. So you don't wanna do that <laughs> on one of these older games. Uh, so what I do is I use uh, Nuvis 2 and just your regular Magic Eraser. So Magic Eraser, I use Nuvis 2 on the Magic Eraser. I just smear a bunch on the Magic Eraser and I start scrubbing the cabinet. So since this isn't a liquid, it's you know more of a paste, kind of like a toothpaste, got a little grit to it. Uh, between the uh, grit in the Magic Eraser and the grit in the Nuvis, it really you know works on getting in all the cracks and getting all that dirt out of the, uh, the paint of the cabinet. And then I just go by with a uh, microfiber cloth and kind of buff that up because the Magic Eraser will leave a little white residue. So I put a little more Nuvis on my microfiber cloth, give it a good buff, and then when you're done, it looks real good. Now in the end, <clears throat> when I get the whole cabinet done, I will come back with my little four inch buffer with a buffing pad, and I'll do the whole cabinet uh, with Nuvis too, uh, just to even up and kind of really buff out the paint. Uh, so now that we got it cleaned on this side, uh, you can see the paint's in really good shape. Everything's really stable. I didn't have any paint transfer onto the Magic Eraser. The advantage to the Magic Eraser is it's white. Uh, the Nuvis is a little bit of a brownish color. If you see any other color on your Magic Eraser, like in this case, if I had blue on my Magic Eraser or orange on my Magic Eraser, I want to stop scrubbing that area. Because if I keep scrubbing, I can scrub the, uh, the paint right off the cabinet, get down the bare wood. Because this is essentially a sand and sponge. A uh, really fine grit sand and sponge, but it is a sand and sponge. So as I'm going along, I'm just constantly checking my Magic Eraser to make sure there's no color on there. Uh, but it looks real good. I'm real happy with it. So now I'm going to turn the game around. I still have this side to do. And I'll film a little bit of me cleaning up the other side, and you'll uh, see how nice and easy it works. Uh, Cost-wise, is not much. Uh, you know, a bottle of this is uh, whatever it costs, which I'm not exactly sure, seven, eight bucks. Uh, the Magic Erasers are like $4 for a pack of four, and uh, it works real good. So let me uh, spin this cabinet around, then we'll get going on the other side. All right, so I spun the cabinet around. And you can see there's all these uh, marks all over the game here. And, you know, these aren't just marks that are going to wipe off with Windex or something. Uh, you know, it, they're, they're on there. Uh, whatever, whatever it is, it's really on there. And you can see, you know, there's the white almost has like a brownish tint to it in a lot of spots. So that's what we need to work on. Uh, so we're just going to go over the whole thing. So I'm going to take a magic eraser. And I like to work in smaller sections of magic eraser. So I just kind of cut it in a little section. And then uh, we'll start scrubbing this thing down. So I just put a bunch of Nuvis 2 on it. And I just work on scrubbing all the gunk off the game. And this is really all there is to it. You know, in the, in the areas where there's not too much going on, you don't need to spend a lot of time. And then the areas like, uh, you know, right here, there's a big black mark. So we need to scrub, scrub that a little harder. But eventually, it will come off. And look real good. So let's uh, let's work on this big mark here. So there's this big uh, mark. We already got a good chunk of it off. 
The only downside of this method is you will go through a lot of Nuvis too. But, uh, you know, it's worth it. So it's almost all gone. You know, and there we go. That big mark is completely gone. Now we have a lot of discoloration on the bottom of this cloud here. You know, just like that, the Magic Eraser Anubis 2 takes it right off. <clears throat> so I'm just going to keep going to town on this. You know, this whole side's probably only going to take 10, 15 minutes. And, and as you work, the Magic Eraser is just going to, you know, fall to pieces. And then uh, once uh, this crumbles into nothing, we'll cut off another piece and go to town. So we're all done with the uh, magic eraser. I went, I, I, I used a, a full one, one magic eraser on this side to uh, get it all clean. So you can see it's all dull and all smeary looking now. <clears throat> so I'm just going to take my uh, microfiber cloth and put a little Nuvis 2 on it. Plus there's still Nuvis 2 residue on the cabinet. And we're just going to kind of in a circular motion, kind of rub this in. Now I'll take a clean part of the rag microfiber cloth that is and just kind of buff it all up and you can see how nice and vibrant all those colors look it's got a nice little shine to it and that'll get better after we use the buffer on it now the, the buffing step is not necessary if you don't have a, a power buffer of some sort um, doing it by hand like this works just fine I just like to go that extra step. It just makes it look uh, that much shinier and gives it a little of a smoother finish. But this is already pretty smooth. Uh, you run your hand over it, <clears throat> you know, it's got a nice smooth finish. This uh, factory paint is really durable stuff. I mean, look at this. It's lasted, uh, what, going on uh, 40 years now. <clears throat> It still looks great with, uh, you know, just a little bit of elbow grease. And we got that looking pretty good. All right, so we still got to do the back. Get the back looking a little better. And I want to do the inside, uh, you know, like where you see it from the play field and a little bit on the neck. Uh, so I'll do those areas and then I will come back and we will use the power buffer. All right, so I got the inside of the cabinet cleaned up and the back cleaned up. So we're just doing the finishing touch here. I got my uh, little four inch Wen buffer uh, with a pad on it and my Nuvis 2. And I'm just gonna go over the whole cabinet real quick with it just because uh, it'll even up the finish and you make it look real nice. So I just put a bunch of Nuvis 2 on my pad and I'll kind of work it in before I turn the machine on so that I don't spray myself with it. And I'm just going to go over the whole painted surface of the cabinet with this. All right, and once I'm done with the buffer, I will get a brand new microfiber cloth 
And we'll just buff off the uh, Nuvis 2. And we will call this surface of the cabinet done at the, after that. <clears throat> and it, it looks real good. It's uh, got a nice shine to it. And, uh, you know, it's got a nice feel to it. Uh, you know, a uh, hundred times better than it was when I got the game. And I don't know in total how much time I'm going to have in uh, working on this cabinet. But it's quite a few hours. But it was time well spent. And, uh, you know, this game's going to be a good looking game when we got done. And we're not going to have really much money in it at all. You know, except for what I paid for it, which was a fair price for a countdown in good working condition. So, like I mentioned, the, using the random orbit sander is not 100% necessary, uh, but it does help to get rid of any uh, swirl marks or anything that was in the finish from when I was doing the, you know, the magic eraser step. I mean, I, I could easily just spend more time hand buffing to get the same result, but it goes much quicker with the little random orbit buffer. All right, so I'll finish up the uh, other uh, four, uh, the other three sides of the cabinet, and I'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I'm doing a, a little bit of touch up on the cabinet. Now I'm not going around and fixing every uh, nick and scuff on the cabinet. You know, I don't want to. You know, usually when you try to touch up an original cabinet, it just doesn't look right. Uh, so. All I want to do is I just want to fill in where there's these uh, chunks of wood missing, you know, where, uh, you know, if we can get some of the blue paint on this wood, it, it'll blend in and you won't notice all these little blemishes in the cabinet. So I used a, a little test panel here to try some colors and uh, I ended up with uh, this Rust-Oleum Satin Sapphire uh, as a pretty good match for this blue. And uh, I just uh, spray that spray paint on a piece of cardboard. And then I use a brush just to uh, brush it into these areas. Uh, and then if I get any excess paint on the, the surface here, I just wipe it off with a paper towel before it dries. Uh, and it'll look good. I already did the uh, back. I'll show that when I'm done. Uh, but let's hit these uh, bigger areas here. And also on the inside of the cabinet here where you can see it, you know, the play field. Uh, I just want to kind of cover these up too uh, to make that blend in and look real nice. So let's get going here. I'm using, a, to start for these bigger areas, I'm using a pretty fat brush so I can kind of get in there. And I'm kind of using almost a dry brush technique. I, basically, I just want to stain that bare wood the color of the blue. You know, I'm not looking to do a perfect, you know, paint job here. I'm just trying to make this uh, blemishes disappear to your eye. So I'm going to spray some blue on my cardboard back here. So I got a puddle of paint. I actually like to let that flash off for a couple uh, minutes. It'll make the paint a little bit firmer and uh, cover a little better. I'll just put my cardboard down here and then dip my brush in it. And we're just gonna kinda dab it in there. And I'm just using a paper towel to wipe off anything on the edges. And now that blemish, you know, basically disappears from your eye. Now, in this case, you're not going to see it. The head's going to overhang here. Uh, same with here. This is a uh, damage from lifting the play field up and down. Uh, but I don't like to see it when I open up my game. So uh, there's no point in leaving it like that when we can quickly and easily just make it disappear. You know, if I was doing a full restore on this game, you know, I would bondo these areas and, you know, paint the whole inside of the cabinet. But we're not doing that on this game. Uh, we don't need to do it on this game because this game's in such good original condition. So this uh, satin sapphire that I found, it's, it's a pretty good match. And because it's a satin, 
and not a gloss. Even the sheen is a, a good match for the original paint here. So in my case, I, I happen to luck out. I had a bunch of uh, different color blues in uh, spray paints from when I did my Disco Fever when I was looking for a, uh, a color to match that cabinet for touch-ups. So I didn't actually have to buy anything. I already had a bunch of blues. Now look at that. I mean, how much better does that look than, uh, than it did before? Same with over here. I'm not using a lot of paint either. I'm just, uh, you know, almost just staining the wood. So there you go. Nice, quick, simple, easy way to uh, make blemishes in the cabinet disappear from your eye. Your eye does not go to those blemishes anymore. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just going to go around and touch up some minor things here or there. I'm not going to do much of anything on the outside of the cabinet. There's not really any major damage on this cabinet anyway. Uh, but if uh, there's a highlighted area to show you, I will come back. All right, so with that big fat brush, I uh, touched up all the bigger areas that needed touching up. And I'm, I'm real happy with the way that it blends in. You really don't see it. So I've switched to a smaller brush, and I'm just going to hit some of the bigger areas on the, uh, the, you know, the outside part of the cabinet. I'm not going to go crazy. I just want to make sure I don't get any of this paint on the actual surface of the actual blue because then uh, you'll actually see it. And uh, most importantly, around the legs, I'm going to be using uh, the metal cabinet protectors and I'll show them in a little bit. They're basically the metal cabinet protectors that Stern uses. I got them from Pinball Life. So I just want to kind of make this mark where the uh, leg dug into the cabinet a little less pronounced. You know, I'm not trying to paint it heavy. I'm just trying to stain it just a little bit. So I'll just... Uh, go around and hit some of the other spots on the cabinet and then uh, we'll be done. All right, so I'm done all those little touch-ups. You can see I didn't go crazy trying to make everything look perfect, but just kind of staining that wood a little bit of a blue color where, you know, there was bare wood showing makes a big difference in, uh, you know, your eye doesn't notice those bare wood spots anymore and the cabinet overall looks good. So like I said, it took me like 20 minutes to do uh, the two sides, the front and the back, and it, it looks real good. Uh, the biggest improvement uh, was the back, which of course you won't see the back when the game's up against the wall, but I do like to try to make the backs look better. So let me spin this around, I'll show you to you real quick. So here's the back. This was, you know, a lot of, if you noticed in an earlier uh, segment of the video here, uh, was really scratched up, especially over here, uh, because this tack glide was missing. Had three tack glides. This one was missing, and it's obviously been missing a long time because people have been dragging this corner of the cabinet on the ground. So although you can still see there's scuff marks here, uh, because I kind of stained all the bare wood blue, uh, it looks real good. Now, like I said, this is the back, but uh, I like to try to make the backs look as best as I can. So uh, it looks good. I, the whole cabinet looks good now. Uh, so let's get on to the last step that we have to restore this cabinet. All right, so now that we got everything else done, the last step I'm going to do is to just get these rails cleaned up a little more. So I have a red scotch brite pad. I'm going to cut this down to a smaller, more workable size. And I use a little WD-40 on the uh, red scotch brite pad as kind of a lubricant, and it helps to uh, really shine up and help to remove uh, fine scratches. Now this process isn't going to remove deep scratches. To remove the deep scratches, uh, you would need to sand with uh, you know rougher grit to 
and then down to fine grit sandpaper. Uh, but, you know, then I risk damaging the cabinet and stuff like that since I don't want to take these rails off. So my main goal is to just get a nice even grain in on these side rails and to get them nice and shiny. So uh, let me uh, cut off a section of Scotch-Brite pad here to work with. And I'm just going to spray some uh, WD-40 on the pad. And I'm just going to start going in one direction, just one direction. You don't want to use any swirly pattern or anything. You just want to go with the grain of the stainless steel. And then we'll just take a uh, microfiber here and kind of buff off and see what we got here. You know, as you can see, these, these side rails have some pretty deep scratches in them. But overall, they look real good. And at least the coloring is nice and even now. There's no, uh, you know, oxidation blemishes in the side rails now. So I just take a little mean green and, uh, you know, get the WD-40 residue off of here. All right, so it looks pretty good, right? Uh, but there's one more step we're going to do to that. But let me uh, do what I just did to this side rail to the other side rail, and I'll come right back. All right, so I got both sides uh, regrained with the uh, red scotch spray pad, and now we're really gonna make these side rails pop. So I'm gonna use some uh, Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish and uh, on a rag. Uh, make sure you don't use a good rag for this. This rag's gonna turn black, and you're not gonna wanna put this disgusting rag in your uh, washing machine after this. Uh, you're just gonna wanna throw this rag out. So I'm using an old rag here. And I also have gloves on because this gets kind of messy. And we want to be careful. We don't want to uh, get anything on the cabinet. <clears throat> so uh, we're just going to open our mag and aluminum polish and get some on the rag. It actually doesn't take a lot to uh, get this going. And we just want to go in one direction. And you can see the uh, rag just turns disgusting and black. But uh, if you've ever used this product, I use this a lot, this Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. It, uh, it really works good on stainless steel, which is what we have here. It works really good on the nickel plated uh, parts of the pinball machine. And we'll just work at this for a while. And then we'll have to clean up uh, our mess that we create afterwards. But <clears throat> you can already see the, the shine that this gives the side rail. It really does a good job. So I'll work at this for a while. It'll probably take 10 minutes or so to uh, polish up this panel. And then I'll come back when I get ready to clean all this gunk off. All right, so I got that all polished up and cleaned off, and you can see they, they really shine. It really does, a, really does a good job getting those rails shined up. You know, you can still see I have some scratches, you know, that I, I didn't bother to spend the time getting out, but those rails are nice and shiny, and they look great. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And then I'll come back and I'm going to throw some wax on these. I, I like to wax these side rails. Um, it just helps to uh, clean up fingerprints and stuff easier. And uh, so let me uh, clean up that other one using the same Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish and I'll come right back. All right, so I just put some uh, regular car carnauba wax on the rails. And that's been sitting for a while. So now I'm just going to buff off our wax. And we will call the side rails done. 
And we will also call the cabinet done. <clears throat> Once I get this all buffed off, I'll take you for a quick spin around the cabinet and we'll finish off this part number one of the uh, countdown restore. All right, so all the cabinet prep work is now done and you can see it looks pretty nice. So for now, we're gonna put the cabinet away. I have uh, some prep work to do on uh, some of the hardware. We're still tumbling a bunch of stuff and I need to polish a bunch of stuff that came out of the cabinet. I also got, uh, I had to order a few parts, uh, not much, uh, but I already got those in. So in the next episode of Countdown Restoration, we'll be putting the cabinet back together. Uh, it shouldn't take too long to put everything back together. Uh, but let's uh, put the cabinet into its corner for now and let's uh, finish up this video. All right, so that will do it for part number one of the pinball restoration update on the 1979 Gottlieb Countdown. We got a lot done in not a lot of time. Uh, let's see, I picked this game up last Tuesday. It is now the following Sunday. So it's been a week and a half since I've had the game. And the cabinet is now all done, ready to be reassembled. Uh, so I probably worked uh, maybe three or four nights. And then I worked uh, for quite a few hours today, maybe four or five hours uh, today, today being Sunday. Uh, so we don't have a lot of time in the cabinet, but man, it came out good. The cabinet really cleaned up good. This is a really nice original condition. 1979 Gottlieb Countdown, um, and it's just not taking much to make it look, you know, pretty pristine. Uh, so in the next uh, part, which will be part number two of the uh, pinball restoration update on Countdown, uh, we'll be reassembling the whole cabinet. Hopefully we'll get the whole thing assembled in that next part, uh, and then uh, get this cabinet into the game room and uh, start working on the head. Uh, so tomorrow is Monday, Columbus Day. Uh, my IKEA order is supposed to be here uh, for all the uh, furniture that we bought for the game room. So hopefully I'll have a game room update uh, episode coming out real soon, uh, hopefully in the next week. Uh, but that'll do it. So we'll wrap this episode up. I want to thank you for watching My Vintage Pinball. Uh, check me out on Facebook, uh, My Vintage Pinball starring Pin Dude. Uh, if you have any uh, viewer mail, questions, comments, anything you'd like me to read on an episode, send me a, a viewer mail at uh, fierodug at gmail.com. Uh, all that information's in the description for this video down below. So thanks for watching my vintage pinball. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, that'll do it. I'm Pin Dude. This is my vintage pinball. I'll see you next time.